with its vast tracts of arable lands, both on its coastal plains as well as its intermediate and hinterland savannas, Guyana offers the unique opportunity for large-scale agriculture undertakings in every area of endeavor, be it crops or livestock, fisheries and aquaculture, agro-processing and other forms of value-added production, etc. The lush tropical climate, coupled with thousands of acres of fertile virgin lands, offer the perfect environment for sustainable agriculture. Guyana has managed to maintain the status of an agriculture powerhouse across the region. Now that the government has plans to expand, investors are being invited to take advantage of all there is to offer from Guyana's very lucrative agriculture sector. Rice production has been at the helm of Guyana's agriculture sector for decades. As time passed, the government has been taking the necessary steps to ensure advances are made in the sector. Over the years, new varieties with improved qualities have been developed and put into cultivation. These varieties have been specially developed to be more resistant to pests and diseases and produce higher yields, allowing farmers to harvest more tons per acre. Guyana has also partnered with the International Institute for Cooperation on Agriculture, AICA, on the cultivation of a biofortified rice variety. Although still in the trial phase, this variety promises to be a game changer as it has a higher percentage of zinc, one of the only trace minerals considered a major player in the creation of DNA, growth of cells, building proteins, healing of damaged tissue, and supporting a healthy immune system. Once commercial production commences, this variety will attract preferential prices on the world market. Upon taking office back in 2020, the government, upon examining what were some of the main commodities being imported into Guyana and the need to make agriculture attractive to its younger population, began working on a plan in January. Guyana's head of state, President Dr. Irfan Ali, launched the Agriculture and Innovation Entrepreneurship Program. This program targets youths from across the country and creates an enabling environment for them to cultivate high-value crops such as carrots, broccoli, and cauliflower, and utilizes climate-smart agricultural practices such as the use of shade houses. To date, 54 shade houses have been constructed. Markets for these commodities are also readily available, and the program has been extremely successful thus far. Corn and soybeans are two of the main sources of protein for animal feed. As Guyana moves forward with the development of its livestock sector, steps have been taken to be able to produce most, if not all, of the feed needed to support the sector locally by 2025. A successful project is currently underway in the Takama Savannas in Region 10, with a local conglomerate realizing a successful harvest from its first trial. In its efforts to support this project, the government has allocated $887 million to upgrade the infrastructure, such as roads, storage and drying facilities, to support the efforts of the investors in the intermediate savannas. Great advances have also been made in Guyana's livestock sector. More emphasis is now being placed on the production of improved breeds of cattle to supply the local and regional markets with required cuts of meat, milk, and other dairy products. Attention is also being placed on improved breeds of poultry, swine, sheep, and goat. Given the growing demand for chicken, duck, pork, mutton, and goat meat, the government continues to support these efforts through the provision of artificial insemination services and other genetic material. Government has also advanced plans for the construction of state-of-the-art abattoirs in three regions of the country to support the development of the sector and meet the quality standards expected. In 2022, Guyana exported more than $2.5 billion worth of coconuts and coconut byproducts. This represents a $600 million increase over the year 2020. The Hope Coconut Industries Limited is tasked with spearheading the advancement of the sector by providing farmers across the country with quality planting materials, mainly through the decentralization of its coconut seedlings program. Already seven nurseries have been established, and by the end of 2022, an additional three nurseries will be built, bringing eight CI annual production capacity to 206,000 seedlings. Other non-traditional crops such as cocoa and coffee, ginger and turmeric are grown in Guyana's hinterland and are also being targeted for expansion. A relatively new and thriving subsector focused on extending the shelf life and adding value to traditional agricultural produce and providing local alternatives to products that were previously imported. Guyana's agro-processing sector has the potential to be one of the largest and most prominent in the region. This year, $96 million will be spent to establish a number 
number of agro-processing and packaging facilities across the country in hopes of providing ready markets for produce, be it fruits, vegetables, sauces, or cosmetics. The expanding aquaculture industry has also been taking center stage given the growing demand for seafood native to Guyana's waters in the diaspora. Brackish water shrimp farming has been given a major boost with the establishment of large shrimp ponds as part of phase one of a government-supported initiative to increase the production of the species. Through this intervention, brackish water shrimp production has moved from 250,000 kilograms mid last year to more than 500,000 kilograms currently. Plans are moving apace for the introduction of deep-sea aquaculture through the use of marine cages, an effort to mitigate the reported decrease in catches, both locally and across the world. Because of the international demand for shrimp and prawns, work is also underway to identify and develop some 2,000 acres of land for shrimp farming. Several large-scale local farmers have already started work on the establishment of processing facilities to bring even more value to the sector. Unlike other countries in the region, Guyana continues to work towards the revitalization of its sugar industry, investing heavily in the refitting and reopening of closed sugar factories, with the aim of not only producing raw brown sugar, but going in the direction of value-added production, packaged sugar, and later refined white sugar. A lucrative opportunity for partnership is on offer in this sector, especially as it relates to the white sugar production. The president Ali-led government has declared Guyana open for business. Under scoring the critical role investment of the private sector plays in any country's development. Many red tape and other hurdles that were in place prior to August 2020 have been removed, thus creating an enabling environment for doing business in Guyana. Steps have since been taken to simplify the business registration, licensing and land titling processes, with more information being made available online, along with certain services being decentralized. Through the Guyana Office for Investment, public-private dialogue has also been enhanced. The Guyana National Bureau of Standards, an ISO 9001-2015 certified agency, has also worked to promote and develop appropriate quality standards. Improvements have also been made to tax policies, and the CARICOM heads of state are currently working to develop a regional system to facilitate better access to financing. The time to invest in Guyana's agriculture sector is now. Come partner with us as we work towards lowering the regional food import bill while achieving and sustaining regional food and nutrition security. Join us on this journey to realizing Vision 25 by 2025.